Oh, the protocols you'll know. The internet is full of protocols. Every service that runs on the internet relies on some form of protocol and sometimes multiple protocols, like email. So let's talk about some of the protocols that are on the internet. Maybe some of them you're familiar with, some of them you're not. So base protocols that we consider part of the core internet protocol suite, we've got TCP IP, um, which is reliable ordered packet delivery. Uh, we also have something called UDP, uh, which is also based on top of IP, but doesn't provide reliability ordering or flow control. Uh, and so UDP can be a good way to build other types of transport protocols. Um, now these are sort of considered part of the core internet protocol suite. There's another part of this suite uh, that you may hear about that's called ICMP. That's the Internet Control Message Protocol. And ICMP is not used for transmitting data around. That's what these protocols do. What ICMP is used it for is to send control messages between routers and other computers and the internet. So for example, one thing you can do with ICMP is something called a ping. I can send a message to another computer on the internet and just find out, is that computer online? And this can be a good way to find out if machines are down or if there's uh, no route between your computer and that other computer on the internet. Okay, most of the interesting stuff happens up here at the application level. And here's where uh, protocols live that you might already be familiar with. So for example, HTTP. This is the core protocol used on the World Wide Web, and it's now actually uh, sort of finding its way to lots of other places as well. Um, and HTTP uh, provides a way for a client to request a document or some information from a server, post information, other types of things. SSH. So when you log into a shared machine like Timberlake or some machine um, that you use to run experiments or to do work, uh, you do so over the secure shell. And the secure shell has its own protocol. It requires uh, a, a server on the other end. And there's a protocol between the client and server that allows you to use the machine as if you were logged in locally. FTP, you can see a pattern here and that a lot of these names end with P, which is obvious. Um, FTP is what's called the file transfer protocol. It was built to allow people to download files from other computers. To some degree FTP is sort of uh, being I think slowly replaced by HTTP in a lot of, in a lot of places. But you may have seen uh, cases where you've been re redirected to a site that starts with FTP and that site will uh, allow you to download information and potentially browse folders and things like this. Um, all right, how about NTP? Let's start to get a little uh, more arcane, the network time protocol. Agreeing about what time it is, is actually super important on the internet. It enables a lot of internet services, and sometimes that agreement has to be very, very precise. So NTP is a protocol that allows two computers to synchronize their clocks uh, to a certain uh, degree of accuracy, and that can be useful for a lot, of other, uh, a lot of functions. So if you set up your computer, for example, to automatically synchronize its time, what it's probably doing is using NTP or some a protocol similar to it to sync to ask other uh, computers what time it is and set its local clock appropriately. All right, other interesting protocols. Probably heard about something called BitTorrent, a protocol used to distribute, of course, legally uh, large files between a number of different computers. So if you've ever tried to download a large file from a single computer, that can take a little while. What BitTorrent does is it splits up that download between lots of other computers that are all trying to access the same file. Like for example, a Ubuntu distribution that you're trying to install because you want to try Linux. That's a great thing to download via BitTorrent. Um, and BitTorrent will allow you to download parts of that file from a bunch of different computers and reassemble it. And that can make the download go quite a bit faster. Um, what else is up here? So uh, there's the SCP also has a companion which is called SC, uh, SSH has something called SCP that runs with it. That's the uh, sec secure copy protocol that allows you to copy files between multiple computers. Um, we have the core mail protocols. SMTP, that's the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. You have IMAP, the Internet Mail Access Protocol. Um, how do we resolve names on the internet? 
So the domain name system that translates things like www.google.com has its own protocol that it uses so that your computer can figure out what address that should map to. And so this, you know, I'm running out of space on the board, right? But this goes on and on and on. Um, and there was a lot of protocols here. And pretty much anything that you uh, find out, any service that runs on the internet, either uses one of these protocols or defines its own protocol in some cases that runs on top of some of these lower core protocols.